the Amp Theory Podcast with Peter Vasquez and Scott Countess. Like a cu- couple hours, maybe? I got here probably at seven, yeah, second. Like an hour, like an hour and a half? Yeah. Well, shit, man, we're fucking first podcast. First time ever. Yeah, we've been we've been talking fucking mad shit about starting this for a minute now. Yeah, we have all the ideas, we have everything ready to go, except we didn't prepare for, like, the technical difficulties. Yeah, but I think next time we'll be more good to go. Uh, if, uh... You know, people have start listening to us, and if they can see how ghetto this shit fucking looks, I think they'd be pretty impressed with how how we're doing all this. I don't want to ruin the magic, so I would never want to show it like this. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but um, yeah, man. I mean, so this is the Amp Theory podcast, mm-hmm. right? I mean, very first one ever. Very first one ever. Very first recording. Trying to do our thing. I mean, we're still even. Looking here, making sure everything's going good. Um, you know, I guess uh, a little bit of a background of why we decided to do this. I know we've been trying to do a podcast for a while. I know we've been wanting to do some funny shit, you know, some serious shit. But uh, that was all fun and, 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 and everything. But I... Um, actually, before I continue, we talk about ghetto shit. Well, fucker, I got <laughs> I got my son's fucking baseball tee. I'm trying to be all serious and shit, but I got my son's base- fucking baseball tee, a copper pipe, one of my fucking wraps for my uh, hands for when I do boxing, this fucking <laughs> sad ass fucking pop guard. My mic is, is, I don't know, it's not the best, but it's not, it's your, not too Your bad. mic is legit. Everything else around it. The surroundings? Mm. Yeah, yeah. But, but everybody's got a beginning. Hell yeah, and, and you know, I think that's actually a good thing to bring that up because th- this is what the podcast really is about. So like, you know, we, we want to talk about helping people reach goals, you know, and um, mm-hmm. when I post things up, I always talk about myself as a traveler, you know, on a journey. And um, I, I feel like people that like to accomplish goals, it, it kind of is like that, right? Mm-hmm. It's like a journey. And, uh, you know, I want to build community with fellow travelers, you know, and I'm nowhere near where I want to be. And I know that we've kind of spoken about some of your goals. Yeah. And uh, we're just heading there. And I think as it's kind of appropriate also, the fact that we want to do a podcast, the fact that this is a podcast, and then this is also another journey amongst different journeys that we're doing. Yeah. This is actually the perfect beginning because when we were talking about it, like... The way I explained it was like, you and I, we've already been to the show, right? We've already been in super good shape. We've already gone through those struggles. We like put ourselves out there and we like punished our bodies like physically and mentally, right? And it's good that we're starting this because we're trying to get back to that. Mm -hmm. It's not just a a physical thing, but it's more of like a a mental thing, like how you're talking about, Mm -hmm. because this podcast is more than just about talking about man i used to be in good shape this is what we can do to get back there but like there are mental struggles that come with you know putting your body through the ringer mm-hmm. um you and i like we both subscribe to that like david goggins mentality where yeah. the, the the best way that i can think about that was the the story that he told when he was running it's 100 degrees outside mm-hmm. and this old man and like this van like rolls up on him and he's like hey it's hot what are you doing out here why are you running and david's like because you're not yeah like that mentality like that that rings like true to me like mm-hmm. i i i'm a big fan of that yeah yeah and i think that um you know i told you this story and i want to make sure i say it especially in the first um podcast you know i i had a a really influential manager um that um really helped me along my journey when it comes to working you know i also work at a 
at a cell phone place. <laughs> you know, I don't want to, I don't want to say where, but uh, something mobile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, the guy's name is Chris Burbank, and and he's a, he's a great guy. And uh, I used to ask him a lot about his management style and, and what he was doing and all that. And uh, you know, one thing that he told me is that like, hey, like everything that I do, I've gotten from somebody or I've stolen from somebody. You know, and mm-hmm. uh, I want you to steal this from me. You know, what works works. And so in this podcast, you know, I'm dumb as fuck, right? Like, <laughs> I ain't invent nothing. Guilty. Yeah, yeah. Like, like you know, I, 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 all I do is actually, like, I think one of the things that um, I can say is a positive for me is that I'm resourceful. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I will look things up. And, yeah. and, 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 and I've looked a lot of shit up. And so most of everything that I will say didn't come from me <laughs> you know it just came from 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 reading people uh people's books you know um biography self-help books all, all these different types of books and so you know i don't want people that listen to us to feel like like we created anything um oh i don't think they'll think that yeah yeah <laughs> once you get to know us and, and you, you find out how how we roll you definitely will be like yeah these motherfuckers don't know shit but um but that's what's good about this yeah. right Cause like this is the beginning. Yeah, you know, uh, it, it's more than just like we've we've read books, we've watched YouTube videos, we've basically taken everything, anything and everything that we could from somebody else to kind of even just have this conversation, right? Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like fitting that we're in a space that's not a studio, yeah, with some ghetto fundamentals going on over here, yeah, yeah. in front of a blank wall. Like it's perfect, right? Yeah. Blank mm-hmm. slate, first podcast. Yeah. For sure. You know, we're we're just trying to like figure it out as we go, and actually, I think we're doing okay so far. Yeah, I mean, so far, uh, you know, we can only get better. Oh yeah. I hope we don't get worse. <laughs> yes. But but but, <laughs> but I think we can only get better. Yeah. Um, and so I guess uh, to go from that, you know, um, maybe. Um, I think as the podcast keeps going, people will get to know us more and more yes. um, from different stories that we might bring up about things that we've done. But uh, I wanted to take a time in this first podcast to um, kind of do like a quick rundown of things that we've done. So, so you know, this is called the AMP Theory. Um, a little bit further, we'll go into what the AMP Theory actually means. Uh, the, 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 it is an acronym. Um, but most of it is, is just, again, about... People that want to do goals, a lot of the avenues, uh, uh, the vehicle that we're going to use to drive the message is a lot going to be with uh, phys- physical activity, mm-hmm. you know, because um, that just seems what we like to do. But, but what we hope you, people get from it is just reaching goals in general, even if they're like academic, professional, um, even small little personal goals, you know, you want to cook better, some shit like that, you know. Yeah. Um, but I do want to kind of like just kind of give a rundown of, of where where we started, where we've been at, and, and then where we're at now uh, with what it is that we're trying to do. Um, I don't know, do you want to go? Yeah, so basically with like the fitness part of it is where I can start. It also ties into the emotional, you know, you're young, you have a relationship, you get out of the relationship for not good reasons, of course, that's why every relationship ends. Mm-hmm. One or two things happens. <laughs> You either get fat or you get fit, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So the first re- bad relationship that I had, I got fat. Yeah. But then I met somebody who was cool with me being fat. And those are really the type of people that you, like, seek out, especially when you're not wanting to do anything to, like, mm-hmm. better yourself. You're mm-hmm. like, this person likes me for me. I'm fucking good the way I am. Yeah. I don't have to do anything, right? Yeah. Well, that relationship ended. And I was like, well, I can get fatter. <laughs> <laughs> or I can get fit. Yeah. So um, I'm not a super tall dude, and uh, five six, five seven in certain shoes. Uh, <laughs> so, like, I, uh, you know, I, I decided that I was gonna get fit, but it was like, it was like a one two combo, right? Mm-hmm. Relationship ended. I was eating bad. I wasn't taking care of myself, but I was okay, right? Mm-hmm. But like one of the things with being fat is like you don't know that you're out of shape or fat until boom, you're there. Yeah, yeah. I remember I remember what it was. I was driving to work one day when I worked retail and it was summer 
and uh, had the windows down like I normally did, mm -hmm. and I started to get like sweat under my. I'm not gonna say pecs because that's not what they were. Titties. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> yeah. I had some under boob sweat, and so I was like, "The fuck is this?" Yeah. Right? Yeah. And like I see like the sweat stains on my shirt, and I'm like, <laughs> "I'm like, nah, that's only 103. It's <laughs> ain't shit." <laughs> so, <laughs> I promise you, I got to work. Yeah. Went straight to the restroom. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm sweating my ass off. I go in there. I got a little paper towel, taking it to my face and shit. I decided to take my shirt off. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's right. Yeah. So I take my shirt off and I look at myself straight on and I'm like, oh yeah, okay. I put on a couple pounds, right? Yeah. No big deal. Yeah. Turn to the side, the profile. I looked like I was eight months pregnant. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck happened to me? Yeah, that, that's always a little fucked up, right? <laughs> Whenever you look at your body through like new lenses, even yeah. though you've been seeing yourself like fucking every day. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait. Am I getting fat? <laughs> it's like you're already there. You look at the mirror yeah. and you're fucking, it's, yeah. It's the same thing with getting older, right? Yeah. Like you look at yourself every day, but you don't stop and think about it until you see a picture of you from 10 years prior. And you're mm -hmm. like, oh shit, I got wrinkles now? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, you know, I had that like realization. I looked in the mirror. I wasn't happy with what I saw and I had to make a change. Yeah. And I was desperate to do it. And... It took, I didn't do any research. Yeah. Like, I just went straight to treadmill, weights, from, like, what I knew in high school. Mm -hmm. And um, by myself, I lost almost 60 pounds. That's what's like, up. Yeah. Again, like, I was almost 260. Mm. And then I got down to 200. Like, just that in yeah. itself. That's what's like, up. that body transformation from lifting weights to make you look like a monster. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what's up. And then um, I know, is this around the time you were like doing all those Spartan races and stuff like that? Yeah, so this was actually a little bit before the Spartan races. Mm -hmm. So the so I got skinny after I lost all the weight, but then I put a little bit back on because mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I achieved my goal. I was happy. Mm -hmm. I didn't like continually keep up with it. Yeah. Um. It wouldn't. It wasn't until I started to do the Spartan races with a couple of my friends where. Uh, the fitness part actually um, became like a routine. Yeah, yeah. And doing like the races is actually a lot of fun. And some of my friends, they like try to challenge me to fitness goals. And at that point in time, uh -huh. I had that mindset. I was like, Nah, you don't, you don't want to challenge me. You don't want the smoke. Yeah, yeah. What? Cool. I just, I'm sorry. I gotta make sure this shit's still recording. Yeah. And that, that I mean, that kind of helps, right? When you. Start like building community and you start, yeah. you, and then you have motherfuckers talking shit. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, gotta have that. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it becomes a little bit better. Um, so where would you say you went from there? Like, where, where you at right now? I was actually doing a really good, um, you know, six days in the gym, you know, cardio. Mm -hmm. And because of you, I started running, but, uh, I was doing really good until COVID happened. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I got COVID in November mm -hmm. of 2020. Yeah. And that thing, like, wrecks your body. Yeah, I bet. Like, I, for eight days, I had, like, a migraine headache, uh, constant fever. It got to almost 103 when I went to the hospital. God damn. Um, I never really had any issues with my breathing, mm -hmm. but uh, my smell went away, my taste was there but everything tasted like it was just drowned in salt so i didn't want to eat anything and then uh laying in bed i'd get like painful like tingling sensations i'd go up and down my spine mm -hmm. and i never like i know a lot of people who get it they're like oh my god i'm dying mm -hmm. and they're justified in feeling like that but mm -hmm. when i had it i was like i'm not gonna die i just don't know if i'll ever be normal again yeah fuck man and to be honest with you like, even though it's been, like, four or five months since I've, like, beat it or whatever, uh -huh. my body still sometimes is, like, I could walk from here to, like, the living room, uh -huh. right? And be like, whew, I could take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's fucking crazy, man. I've been lucky not to, you know, I haven't personally gotten it, but, man, um, just from, I remember you were talking about it, you know, right after you got it, and you were telling me about it. And man, like you hear those stories about people getting it and then not being that bad. Mm -hmm. And then 
I hear the stories about you. I think you said like what constant headaches and fucking body aches and shit Eight like day that. Eight-day migraine. Yeah, that's fucking Everything. crazy. It was so bad too that if I had to get up to take a piss, right, I would stand up, get lightheaded, feel dizzy, yeah. and then want to throw up on yeah. myself. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fucking nuts, man. That's what I'm saying. Like I, I knew I would beat it, and I'm glad I did within like that eight yeah. day period. Yeah. There was just that time where I was like, am I ever going to feel the same? Mm-hmm. So yeah. from where I was before I caught it to like where I am now, like I'm far from the best shape I've ever been in. Mm-hmm. But what I think is cool about this podcast and doing the filming of it is <sighs> people can see us on day one, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Day one, episode one of what we're doing. Yeah. And then the further we go along, all they're going to see is that we're not just talk. Like, yeah. we're like we're about it. Yeah, yeah, for like, sure. Like, I put in work. Yeah. You put in work. And, like, we track it. Like, I see you on Strava every day. Yeah. Running these, like, 5Ks and shit. Yeah, yeah. Which I think is impressive, which is something that I told you was uh, with our fitness and things like that. It's like we've always kind of been on the same road. Uh-huh. We've just never gotten on at the same time yeah, until yeah. now. Yeah, 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 man. And uh, I, re- I really do feel like that too. You know, and I think as people, you know, like I said, we keep more, putting more stuff out. People see, uh, you know, how similar a lot like our paths have been. Mm-hmm. Um, before I go into myself, like, what what is your goal? Like, what are you trying to achieve right now? Well. The, for vanity's sake, I want to be, I want to be back in like my physical, my peak, mm-hmm. back when my body was like hard. Like I always felt like I was walking around with a pump. Yeah. There's something that that does to you mentally too. Like yeah. right now, yeah, like I'm not in the best shape I've ever been in, but like my mental health is okay. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm happy, mm-hmm. but like I'm not content. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So with what comes along with like being physically fit is like that like mental like edge that you feel Uh because you're like i feel good i look good yeah so therefore like i must be doing something right yeah yeah. what that does for your confidence yeah like that carries over more than just like being out in public talking to people that you don't know like that carries over to your professional life yeah your home life things like that because you you work out a lot like i'm sure like once you've done everything that you could possibly do for the day and you come home to the missus like you're in a much much better mindset oh yeah she's much more appreciative of it oh yeah yeah um how i explain here in a minute like um yeah it's definitely the case with uh me and my wife um i'm definitely a way better person if i beat myself up yeah you know um and uh like just going back to something you said um one of my favorite fighters, uh, Max Holloway, he he says this often. I, I've heard this before, so I'm, I'm not. I, I know. I don't know who invented it, but I know he constantly says, um, "Look good, feel good, fight good." Mm-hmm. You know, because he, you know, I was watching like all them embedded, and he goes and he gets his hair cut, you know, and he gets ready to go for the fight. But um, you know, I really do believe in that. You know, um, whenever I um, let myself go. And I really just wasn't keeping up with, you know, everything. Just like from the way, you know, you're grooming yourself, you know, to to all that stuff, mm-hmm. you know. Um, it, it really it really plays into like a negative mindset, mm-hmm. you know. Um, you have to be happy. Like, now I'm not saying, you know, if you're a girl, you got to like do a whole bunch of makeup. Like, you know, right. if that's your, your thing, do it. If, it. if it's not, don't do it. But whatever it is that makes you say like, damn, I look good, you know, damn, you know, you, you have to do that, you know, you yeah. have to put a little bit of effort. Um, I really do feel like sometimes the negativity is easier than mm-hmm. the positivity because the positivity, like, takes work. Negativity almost comes natural to us, mm-hmm. you know? But with that, too, nobody's going to be as honest with you as yourself, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or that mirror. So, like, when you look in the mirror, mm-hmm. it's not going to lie to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you might be able to get away with being like, oh, I just, maybe I'm just a little out of shape, right? Yeah. But then when you look at that profile of yourself, and you're like, oh, yeah. god damn. Yeah, yeah, like, for sure. That's like, this shit almost make you cry. Yeah. Like, 
I know we're not going to necessarily talk about it right now, but like, you know, we read David Goggins' book, We Took the Accountability Mirror. It's yeah. like heart, right? Yeah. Like, I hurt my feelings in the accountability mirror. Yeah. I almost brought myself to tears because I'm like, you are not the you that you deserve to be huh. or the you that you were. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because what you're saying is like, kind of look bad you kind of feel bad yeah, right yeah yeah because you're i think a lot of that has to do with like what you're putting in your body right yeah. like you could eat healthy clean and be like it might not even really be like that great but you, in your head you're like mm-hmm. oh i i eat clean yeah reward myself give me a gold star yeah but then you go out and fucking get mcdonald's and you have like a 20 piece nugget and some fries and a large coke and you're like what man yeah 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 for sure and and you know like you know i want to be very clear too like uh i think that if you're happy mm-hmm. being the way that you are like i think like, happiness is above everything you know oh, like yeah. you know like i said fitness is the vehicle in which we're going to talk about attaining goals but if that's not where it's at for you like you know if you're happy being whichever way and shape that you are like be happy but if you're not like it goes back to being like accountable like mm-hmm. be honest with yourself yeah you know be honest with yourself and and it goes true like if if you're going to school and it's just causing you stress because you ain't paying attention and you ain't doing it like be honest with yourself say hey motherfucker like i'm going into school i have to do this shit and i'm not putting it 100 percent. like mm-hmm. don't be fucking mad when your grades show you that you're dumb as fuck <laughs> you know <laughs> like don't be fucking oh, yeah. mad i've been there too yeah yeah so so <laughs> like you know again like Fitness is just the vehicle that we're using to deliver the message, you know. Yeah. But um, you know, when it comes to me, like uh, I started playing baseball uh, from the second grade. Uh, I played it all every year since then. I, I played uh, baseball in high school, um, and baseball was the first thing that really taught me how to like put in work, you know. Because when I first started, um, I, I, I sucked just like anybody else that starts anything. You know, you're just not that good. Yeah. And uh, I went in and I, I started putting in the work and, um, you know, I, I would do everything. Like I, I would grab a bucket of balls and I would go and, you know, just throw by myself, you know, if I had to. Um, I had a, a, a stepdad that was great that would sit there and, and, and do things with me. And, you know, um, he really um, he really knew how to talk to me, you know, like he, he knew that from the beginning, you know, I was like, Man, you ain't really my dad. Like, you know, don't be, you ain't my dad. You know, don't tell me what the fuck to do. But, like, yeah. he knew how to challenge me. Like, he never came at me, like, head on saying, hey, you have to do this. He told me, man, you can't do that. You can't do this. And, like, that shit, like, coming from him was, like, fire under my ass. I was like, you know what? Like, I need to fucking, I need to, like, I need to prove him wrong, mm-hmm. you know? And then he'd be like, oh, you, you can't, you can't do all these ground balls without, like, doing an error. And he'd hit them and he'd like purposefully do them fast so that I would mess up. But like, I would be like, let's do it again. You know, let's do it again. And I I didn't see that like in him, like doing that to me, he found out what really um, made me tick, you know, Mm -hmm. and and making me um, push hard. And, you know, because, you know, just being young and having high metabolism, I'm also, I'm also tall, um, so, I mean, I'm not too tall. Uh, six foot. Fuck off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but just better than you. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, With six inches, really. No, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but so, so I was always real lean, you know, and I had a high metabolism. And I think uh, sometimes when you're a little bit taller, you don't notice that weight, you know, kind of kind of get you out of I would assume yeah. that you carry it a little different. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, right, right before... Um, my senior year in high school, I actually didn't play my senior year in high school. Um, as you know, um, my mm-hmm. girlfriend at the time got pregnant. Mm-hmm. And so um, my mom, being the type of mom she is, she's like, hey, playtime's over, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> you know, you got to be a man. You got to go out and work and you got to provide for this for this daughter that you're going to do. So, like, I didn't pay, play my senior year of high school. And, um, you know, it was like, kind of like the first year that I really didn't do a lot of activity. I kind of started gaining a little weight my senior year. And, then, like, my graduation pictures, I was, like, you know, kind yeah. of built in, a uh, l- little heavy. And that's kind of, like, my first wake-up call that I was, like, oh, shit, you know, like, I, I, need, a, I need to start working out. I got, mm-hmm. I got a gym membership. And, 
you know, I started hitting it hard and, and that's kind of like when that same mentality that I had for baseball started kind of going somewhere else, you know? Right. And so I, I started, you know, hitting the weights. I lost a lot of weight. Um, I ended up moving to Omaha, Nebraska, and uh, I ended up becoming a personal trainer. Um, and in Nebraska, they're built different over there. Those are some, what do they, they call them, corn-fed? Corn fed. Corn fed. Yeah, yeah, them motherfuckers are huge. I thought I was tall. Everybody in Nebraska is tall, you know, and they all fight because they're right next to Iowa, so wrestling's a big big thing over there. Mm. They all fight. I started um, when I was a personal trainer. The other two personal trainers, one was, uh, uh, he, he did Muay Thai, and he fought in Muay Thai. The other one was a boxer, and they're like, hey, you really want to make money, uh, you're, you're probably going to want to start fighting. And I was like, oh, shit, okay. So I gave myself like six months to train and to be in my first fight because over there, I mean, I don't know if it's the same thing here in Dallas because once I came back, I, I didn't really pursue it. But over there, you, like, they had this, at the time, they had this thing called the Omaha Fight Club where yeah. you just would go, you sign up, and they'll just like, how much do you weigh? Oh, he weighs the same weight. Like, go fight, you know? And so I trained for six months, man. I got my ass whooped. I, I broke my shoulder quite literally. And, uh, you know, uh, I was able to – that's when, like, a different type of pain in training kind of started coming up. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I was like, you know, I'm getting my ass whooped. I'm used to I'm used to being the taller one, but over there, everybody was big. So I had to learn how to fight like a smaller person, even though yeah. I'm six foot. Um, and I was just getting my ass whooped day in, day out. Um, um, later on, I'll go into like a story about what ended up happening, but the fight didn't end up happening. I ended up moving back. I did some boxing for a little while. And then, uh, you know, I was single. So I, I would go to the gym for like hours. You know, I played basketball for a couple hours and I like lift for a couple hours, like all the time. Yeah. And when I met my wife, I mean, I don't know how she ended up wanting to stay with me, but like, I was just used to doing that. Then whenever I'd go see her, it'd be, it'd be like really late. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and at first, like, you know, she was cool about it, you know, but once we started getting a little bit more serious, she's like, Hey, maybe four hours at the gym daily you know yeah maybe you could cut it down a little bit and i just didn't know how to not she says i have the too much gene sometimes you don't know how to and i'm not just saying this about you but like i see it in myself too yeah. right uh don't know how to turn it off yeah like you you set a goal and it's almost like tunnel vision right because mm -hmm. uh that's that similar situation is also kind of like ruined could be potential relationships with me mm -hmm. Um, because training for Spartan races is, it's not difficult, but it's a little bit more like time extensive, right? Mm -hmm. So you go to the gym, you lift, but then you're like, okay, not only do I have to be strong, but I got to make sure that my cardio is up. So mm -hmm. what would have been at that time, like an hour and a half, like weightlifting session turned into like a two and a half hour session mm -hmm. just because I had to get that hour of cardio in mm -hmm. just to make sure that I'm... I'm able to run across that finish line. Mm -hmm. I might not run the whole race, but when it comes to that finish line, I'm going to finish fucking strong. Right. right. Yeah. So, uh, I'm not going to talk shit about certain dating apps, mm -hmm. but they come into play, right? Yeah. And one of the things that, like, uh, women our age are like, oh, I'm really into a man who's really goal oriented. Yeah. They are until your goal is like 99.9% .9 of your time yeah and that 0.1% isn't going to be spent on them yeah right? yeah yeah, yeah for so sure. that was that was like the situation I came across because they were like oh it's really attractive that you want to do this and that you're working towards that yeah but when you can take some time off and like meet with me and yeah. I was like I don't think that's gonna happen yeah like yeah I had to think about it too before I'd even reply because I was like yeah, talking with you has been cool, but if that means that, like, talking with you is going to, like, take me away from my goal yeah, because of that tunnel vision that I had, yeah, I was like, I'll just write you off real quick. Yeah. All we're doing is texting. Yeah. I don't even know you. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like that's where I got lucky because I think in, in my situation, um, I think through the years, because I, I, I've been married. Okay, I don't want to fuck this shit up. We're in two thousand. So, so this we can year, it out. <laughs> <laughs> this year is gonna be our eleven year anniversary. So we we just been... about to bust the door. Right. And be like you motherfucker, you know, not... I forgot, bitch. <laughs> no, nah, but um, you know, so we've been married ten plus years now, and you that's know, a better way of putting it. Yeah. So uh, you know, I've I've been lucky because you know we've gotten to know each other, and, and she's been able to really learn throughout the years 
um, that I, I sometimes I think of crazy shit to do mm-hmm. and I give it like 110% mm-hmm. and she's learned to like, you know, kind of let me do that. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe, maybe it's some of it is a negative on me because she's like, she knows a lot of it. She's like, oh, well, he'll just change it to something else later. <laughs> you know, like, like it'll just be something else. But she knows that whenever I get like focus on something that, that, that I do do it. And, um, you know, right, right around that time though, she really did have to have that serious like conversation where it's like, Hey, you know, we're trying to see if this is what we're going to do with the rest of our lives, like be in this relationship. And yeah. like, you know, it, uh, you, you're going to have to not spend four hours at the gym, you know? So yeah. one, once that kind of started, um, you know, I, I did dial it back. Um, but I think that when that started happening, like I started giving myself an, more of an excuse, you know, and I think that um, with this whole amp theory, you know, one of the things is, is just persistence, you know, and sometimes we think that just because we stop moving that it's over, but mm-hmm. it just means that it's on pause, you know, and, and right. I think that's kind of like what they're going to see with our story is that, you know, through my 20s. Yeah, I, can, I continued working out. I, I continued to like do different things. Like I, I tried a little bit of powerlifting. I did a lot more deadlift, um, bench press, stuff like that. Um, but eventually, I just kind of, just kind of stopped, mm-hmm. you know. And um, <sighs> through my twenties, I was smoking a shitload of weed, <laughs> and 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 uh, that's not good because uh, it's not known for giving you the most motivation, mm. you know. And so I lost a lot of my motivation. And kind of like what you were saying earlier with with your things, like you see yourself every day, you don't notice that you're just gaining, gaining weight. And because I didn't completely stop, um, because I didn't completely stop. Because you didn't completely stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I didn't completely (laughs) stop because I kept, you know, lifting and stuff like that. I wasn't noticing because while the rest of my body was getting bigger, Mm -hmm. uh, like my shoulders, my arms, I didn't notice my belly getting as big as it was, you know? It just kind of gets proportional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I'm just like, ah, well, and, you know, and I was like, well, you know, I'm powerlifting and powerlifting bodies are different and shit like that. <laughs> so I was just getting fat. I'm dirty bulking. Yeah, yeah. And so I think, um, you know, one of the biggest things is I started getting really unhappy. Uh, I was eating very uh, bad, you know, and then my energy levels went down. I was always, always used to exerting so much energy mm-hmm. in the things that I was doing. I, I became a lot more emotional. You know, my, my wife had to deal with a lot of my emotions that came from nowhere, you mm-hmm. know, and it was because I wasn't, I, I'm the type of person I got to get myself tired. I you just can, break down and cry? Or he, what? <laughs> man, I, I, yeah, like sometimes I, it, it, like it really was like, I, I went through like all types of emotion, depressions, you know, really? anxiety and all that stuff. And, and I mean, you, we know each other since high school. I mean, since even before, before that, that yeah. yeah, before that. So like, you know, my personality has changed a lot. From how I used to be to how I am now, because I went through a lot of emotional things, like a lot of self searching, a lot of all, all that stuff, and mm-hmm. and a lot of it, you know, a lot of the way that I was before, um, I was like overcompensating for a, a lot of uh, emotional things that I just had never dealt with, and so then whenever you take the fact that like I wasn't getting my body tired and I wasn't breaking it down uh, to the point where it's like I, I was able to tame my mind a little bit, wouldn't be so hyperactive. And all of a sudden it's like, I have all this energy and I start going into these different avenues of my mind Yeah. of like, well, I don't like that. I did this and I'm beating yourself up for shit that you did in high school or <laughs> like, you know, man, I shouldn't have been a fucking asshole that day or, or you know what? Like, man, like I did this shit and, and it really hurt my ego and this motherfucker did this shit to me. And like, you know, maybe I should have fought, you know, like you start getting into these things and, and you know, you start breaking yourself down and that's what ended up happening to me. Um, well, and I, I can agree with that yeah. because after that first breakup that I was talking about where, you know, you have two options, get fit or get fat. Yeah. I got fat. Yeah. I would, uh, it, it was just like how you're saying, it's nothing but like a, a roller coaster of, you know, it sounds so stupid, but I would like count. I'd be like, okay, we were good up until this day, yeah. right? But then on this day after that, that's when shit started to go downhill and then it just never came back up. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff that I'd put myself through. I'd be up all night and the whole time I'd be eating my feelings too, yeah. right? Because, yeah. you know. I was working. I didn't like come into like a lot of money, 
But, you know, a number six at Whataburger is like five bucks at this time. I'm like, I could eat that shit three times a day. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, and that's what kind of what would happen. Yeah. And, you know, just just the the beating yourself up part, you know, like there's like a, like a mental thing that's to that. You can choose to, you know, deal with it mm-hmm. or like how we went through like those emotions like where you know i I cried i've cried many times and i've made myself cry like not being happy with where i am but most of my uh most of the times where i have like those like really tough conversations with myself they always want to like my demons always want to show up when i'm ready for bed Mm -hmm. i could be on the verge of sleep and then boom be rattled awake with like some shit that's like haunting me Mm -hmm. from a week ago a month ago Mm -hmm. 10 years ago Mm -hmm. and like there's something about um exhausting myself through like hard work that like kind of like puts my demons at ease right yeah yeah yeah. i think that's something that like you dealt with as well like how you're talking yeah yeah because like i mean you got to give yourself reasons to be happy with yourself yes you know and i think that when you don't when it's like you start letting yourself down right you're gonna say oh, i'm gonna yeah i'll go to the gym and then you don't you let mm. yourself down you say hey, you know what i'll read a chapter of a book and then you don't and then you let yourself down mm-hmm. and then you're like man I, I should eat healthier and you don't and you let yourself down and it, it starts becoming this whole big thing where it's like you just don't believe in yourself you yep. know and then you don't you don't believe the words that are coming out your mouth and then if you can't believe in yourself yeah then what can you believe in you know and even if you do kind of like have that spiral where you're like doubting yourself and you're doubting like your own intentions you go to the gym for a day like okay cool i put in a day's hard work you read that chapter from that book you're like i'm a little bit smarter you know like i ate good Mm -hmm. maybe tomorrow i'll wake up a little bit lighter Yeah. yeah but you can't just do it one day yeah you have to keep doing it you have to be persistent yeah you got to change your mind you got to set a goal you got to like work towards it and if yeah. you don't reach it you know yeah. reassess yeah right yeah for sure. i didn't reach my goal on this date cool yeah because i didn't reach my goal on this date i'll reach it within two weeks mm. a month yeah or if it's even tougher like i'll reach my shit like a month out yeah but in order to get there I have to continue to do it. Yeah. I have to be persistent. Yeah. I gotta change my mindset, and I have to hold myself accountable for it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I agree, hundred percent. Um, so now, I mean, now, uh, where where I'm at with everything is I'm. So I I put myself a goal, you know, get, getting out of this dark time of my life, you know, where I was going through that all that mental stuff that I was going through. Um, I ended up. Uh, meeting a whole bunch of people at work that kind of believed in me and were like, hey, man, you kind of work hard, you know, you, you, maybe you should think about going into management. I never thought um, at the time. I had, like, long hair, all these tattoos and stuff like that, and I was like, man, I, I don't look like manager material. You know, I got these piercings. You know, your whole life you're being told, you know, you know, hey, if you have those those gauges, you know, yeah. you ain't going to have a lot of jobs. Hey, <laughs> if you get those tattoos, you know, you, and, and now times have changed, but, like, you know, Oh, oh yeah, they yeah, become you know. way more cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm 33, so still at the time, you know, like and then you know, I I think American culture uh is in, into it a little bit more. My, oh, yeah. my, my both my parents come from Mexico, yeah. and so like, you know, with with them uh it, it's a little bit more frowned upon, you know, because it's like, you know, nobody's going to trust you now. <laughs> you know, it's like all of a sudden you're like a piece of shit, you know, for getting tattoos and stuff. Yeah. So you know, I was being told all that, but um, I, I ended up reaching that goal, and, and I read a lot of books that helped me kind of just stay focused, overcoming this, like, negative mindset of saying you can't do stuff to where you can't. Um, through the help of people there, I ended up achieving that goal, and then I ended up taking the risk of then reaching the goal, and within less of, a, less, reaching the goal, and a... Less time than expected? Well, not just that, but what am I trying to say? Um, not a year, less than a year, in less than a year, that's what I've been trying to say this whole fucking time, in less than a year, you know, I ended up going to Omaha, Nebraska, because, uh, you know, my dad was like, hey, you know, I have my own business here, and I was like, yeah, well, I was ready to retire T-Mobile, I was like, that's, it's better to have my own business, you know, mm-hmm. so I ended up leaving, that shit went sideways, you know, it ended up not going, and, and, and 
you know, in different in other episodes, I'll go into further detail about more things like that. Um, but anyways, uh, it didn't happen the way that I thought. We ended up moving back, you know. But within that time, all these self help books, you know, um, I also came across, you know, David Goggins and, mm-hmm. and and you know that dude. The way that that guy thinks uh, was great and. I never really thought hundred mile races were like a real thing, mm-hmm. and until I like kind of like, he came across the Joe Rogan podcast, you know, and I was like, oh, yeah. who the fuck is this guy, you know? And I started looking into it. And I was like, oh, people do this? Like, I didn't know this was to be done. It's like I would assume not a lot of people do this, you know? And uh, that was a challenge that like kind of just you know lit lit something up inside of me that I was like, hey, I'd like to run a hundred miles. You know, yeah. and so uh, I kind of just started running and started running and started running. And, um, you know, so kind of wrap things up. Like when it comes to me, my, my goal right now is, is to just run. Yeah, I'm just running. You know, I, I definitely want to get smaller. Um, at my heaviest, I was like 250 ish, mm. you know. And then right now I'm I fluctuate between as low as uh, 210, as high as 215, depending yeah. on what I eat. <laughs> but um you know i'm trying to get down to 190 i want to take you know some load off my knees while i'm running um like you said i, I try to run every day you know um and my, my goal is to get to the 100 mile race per- professionally you know i'm getting my real estate um license uh, i was supposed to you know that that's why i went to omaha to, to be in the real estate game um fix and flips and all that stuff so so those are my two goals you know it's like you know, just because that shit didn't go the way that I wanted it to, um, I'm still going to fucking be in real estate mm-hmm. and I'm still going to get myself in good fucking shape. I'm going to run marathons. I'm going to do all that stuff. And, and now I'm going to be doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that you brought up the uh, toll that like the running takes on your knees. Uh, you know, so to kind of like, I don't know, maybe it'd be good to tell you like you've kind of been like a mentor in like multiple ways, right? You told me that you've learned from me, but I've also, like, taken a lot from you uh, when it came to, like, in high school, like, when we started playing guitar, right? I asked mm-hmm. you to teach me, and you're like, nah, you got to teach yourself. Mm. It's like, the best advice I can give you is, like, this is how I did it. Here's a book. This is how you need to do it, right? Mm-hmm. And for a lot of people, they'd be like, well, fuck him. <laughs> teach me nothing. But, like, that mindset that I have, I'm like, okay, fuck you. Like, I'll show you. Uh-huh. Like, and that's what I did. Like, I I don't think I ever like wowed you, but like from like start to like where I am now, like even like we only play like a little bit like mm-hmm. together. It's like night and day difference, and yeah. that's only because like I didn't have a teacher because you're like the best teacher. Basically, I think now looking back, you're like the best teacher is gonna be you. Yeah. And so I taught myself. Yeah. And then when it comes to like the working out stuff. You know, we you you would already become like a personal trainer. And I remember you're like, what I'm giving you would cost other people X amount of dollars. You're getting this shit for free. <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. And I learned a lot. Yeah. And I was able to take everything that I learned, and I was able to like transform myself. Mm-hmm. Something that I liked about working out with you was um, since you're the bigger guy, you set the weight, mm. right? Mm-hmm. There is no like. Uh, okay, let's do this much. You're like, Mm-mm, we're doing this, mm-hmm. which pushed me to get stronger. Yeah. And then when you left, and I had to, you know, kind of, I had to become the big guy. I couldn't find a smaller guy to continue to work with me, mm-hmm. which is something that like I get. Like we've t- we've talked about it a little bit. It's like. Every time we're pushing ourselves, every time we're like hurting, every time there's pain or whatever, we're like, why are we doing this? Mm-hmm. And it's because there's always a goal in mind, right? Yeah. Uh, with the weightlifting stuff, like my, uh, the guys that I would try to like take with me to work out, they'd be like, just <laughs> slowly stop coming. Yeah. And so it just became a solo venture. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. The best teacher, the best gym partner, the best whatever I could have is going to be me. Mm-hmm. Uh cut to like now like we're both like we're both running Mm -hmm. you've been running for a lot longer you've been doing like a lot more running than i have uh since i'm still in that beginning phase i'm still trying to get to the head that first mile Mm -hmm. like without you know my knees screwing up Mm -hmm. like 
I was running, pushing through the pain, like, why am I doing this? And then I was like, because I want to push myself, right? Mm -hmm. You know, David Goggins talks about that 40%. Mm -hmm. It's like when you're ready to like quit, you've only expended like 40% of your energy. Yeah. Let's keep going. Yeah. But there's been several times where I'm like, in my head, I'm like, okay, I've still got the 60%, right? Yeah. I'm going to keep going. And then my legs fucking give out. Mm -hmm. Like I've fallen down. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, the first, so when my knees give out and I fall down, the first thing I think about is, fuck, I didn't reach my mile. Yeah. And like, that's the first, the first thing that comes to my head is like, I didn't reach my goal. Yeah. And I get mad, but then after I take a deep breath and I have to think, like, okay, first day I could only run like a tenth of a mile. Mm -hmm. A couple of days later, I could only run like a quarter of a mile, mm -hmm. a half a mile. I got up to like... I don't know, three quarters of a mile before my legs give out and then I fall down. Mm. And it's because uh, we were talking about uh, the uh, knees over toes guy, right? Mm. I looked into him and all the stretches and stuff that he's done, all the routines that he has due to his like knee injuries. Mm -hmm. And like he's basically strengthening like those knee muscles and his shin muscles. Mm -hmm. That way he can like push past. And I'm like, if this dude can go through injury after injury after surgery, and then come back, do these specific exercises. Maybe I should start doing that and focusing on the running at the same time. Yeah. Get my shit strong, then I'll be able to make my mile. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man, for sure. Like, you, you, you know, the thing is, it's just about con be, be constantly moving. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like just try to be better today than you were yesterday. Always. You know, and, and you know, with whatever goal it is, I mean, um, I think sometimes we get in our heads because we start thinking about the endless possibilities of the future, mm -hmm. right? And you think like, oh man, like, you know, shit, I'm not going to be able to pay this bill, you know, like that shit's due in three weeks and like, what the fuck am I going to do? This, this, and that. Mm -hmm. You know what? Like, yeah, it's a possibility that you won't be able to pay it. But if you can do what you can do today, mm -hmm. you put yourself in a lot better position that when three weeks comes that you'll be able to, to, to actually... Um, um, you'll actually be able to to pay that bill, um, and, and that's true with everything, right? It's mm -hmm. like, hey, I can't lift, you know, three hundred pounds right now on a deadlift, you know. And it's like, well, what if I'll never do it, you know? Like, I mean, that. maybe that's not a, a a good example because yeah, you just fucking keep hitting it, you know. And you'll you'll eventually get it, you know. Um, but you know, to to go go back on something that kind of like you said earlier you're like I, yeah i've always been real dependent on doing things on my own mm -hmm. you know um, i've always been a big believer um now i'm not amazing at guitar you know so i don't want people to think that it's like i'm, I'm over here shredding and i told you like you know this fucking guru hey <laughs> do it yourself you know i i, I uh, as i've gotten older i really do think that mentors do help in a journey but you know my thing is is do what you want to do Right, like I wanted to be in a band and playing the guitar. Like I didn't wait till I was like fucking this, you know, virtuoso on the guitar before I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get on stage. It's like no, nah. like I, I I figured out how to make a freaking song and I went out and did it, you know. Mm -hmm. And and I'm still doing that shit now. Like look at this first fucking episode, you know. It's like, you know what? Hey, I want to do a podcast. Let's do a podcast. Cool, we're gonna do a podcast. And then we just fucking figure it out, you know. Yeah. And and that's gonna be with with your fucking goal. Like hey. Like, what's your fucking goal, you know? And, and you, you say, this is what I want to do. And then why? I think the why is very important. It's like, why am I going to do this? If you don't have a strong enough why, as soon as shit gets fucking hard, you're going to stop, mm -hmm. right? But if you have a goal and you have why, the rest of the shit figures itself out, you know? It's like, just like this podcast came together, it's like, it, it just fucking happened, you know? Um, we fucking figured it out and we made it fucking happen. So, um, you know... I do think we should... No, too, that we put this together, like, in a week. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's basically a week. We said, hey, like, literally last Sunday, right? Yeah. Or was it Monday? Either I don't remember. One of the two days. We were like, hey, we're, this is what we're going to fucking talk about. Be ready. See you Sunday. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then, like, we had some conversations uh, in in between, but then, you know, we kind of just, hey, this is what I got. This is what we can use. And, 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 and you know, here we are now. Yeah, um, and moving moving forward, things will probably be a little bit more structured too. But just to kind of, you know, say what's up. Yeah, like, this is kind of like what this is gonna be about. This is kind of who we are. Yeah, 
you're going to get more of that as we as yeah. we continue to move on. Yeah, and uh, I think that, you know, to kind of start, um, I'm, I'm, I mean, we still got a little bit of time, but, um, you know, the, the actual AMP theory, I think that we should take some time in this first episode to, to talk about what that actually means. And so um, AMP is an acronym for accountability, mindset, and persistence. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like what we came up with as what you really need to achieve your goals. You know, it's mm-hmm. easy, I, we feel like you, if you primarily do these three things, uh, there's no reason why you won't reach whatever top of the mountain you want to reach, you know? At all. Persistence, man. Yeah. It's, you know, just, you got to keep working towards your goals. Like, when we, when we came up with the idea... It was just so perfect just because, like, those three simple things are, uh-huh. it, they're simple when you think about it. you got to hold yourself accountable for everything that you do if you want to reach your goal. Uh-huh. you got to get yourself in, like, the right mindset. you got to prepare yourself to put yourself through all, you know, your trials and tribulations to get to your goal. And then in order to get there, you just got to keep at it. you got to be persistent, which I think is so perfect. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like each step has its own challenges, you know, and and it doesn't mean that like you just check it off like a checklist and you and and all of a sudden you're done, you know, it's like, no, it's like a continuous thing that you have to always be honest with yourself. You know, you do have to be accountable Mm -hmm. and celebrate Mm -hmm. your wins, but understand that unless you're where you want to be, like you ain't done shit yet. Yeah. You know, like. Um, I've been I've been hitting a lot of milestones, you know, like uh, especially it comes to my running, right? Like like I, I ran my first half marathon. Um, I just went out and started running, so I'm gonna run, you know, thirteen, thirteen point one miles, you know, and, and I did it, but like that still ain't shit, like in comparison to to where it is that I'm trying to go. So, okay, hooray for me, you know, for this day. But like you gotta keep fucking working, you know, you gotta keep going, and you gotta hold yourself accountable to say, hey, good job, right now celebrate it but you still ain't shit you gotta continue moving forward and you gotta continue uh getting where you need to get and i think nowadays you know with social media and stuff like that right Mm -hmm. um we we really want to broadcast how good of a person we are but i feel like a lot of it is just by tearing other people down versus just actually living Mm -hmm. what it is that you're trying to do I'm glad you bring up social media because people on social media, like when you go on and you search like a hashtag, say it's like a fitness goal, right? Mm -hmm. It's just instant gratification. Mm -hmm. Like that's what we want. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to work for it. I'm not saying it's everybody. So Mm -hmm. I don't want to like generalize, but some people don't want to work for it. Mm -hmm. They just want to like do like a hundred sit-ups and have a six pack. Mm -hmm. It's not Mm -hmm. fucking possible. Yeah. The dudes or the ladies that you're like looking up to, that's hard fucking work. Yeah. That's not just like a month in the gym. Mm-hmm. That's not like, you know, people who have like these like celebrity personal trainers who get like Hugh Jackman bodies in six months, right? Mm-hmm. These are people who have put in the time and the effort and on social media it's just readily available. Mm-hmm. And you see that and you're mm-hmm. like, Well, I want that, but I want it now. And some people either get discouraged by putting in that hard work or they get excited about putting in that hard work. Yeah. But, you know, either way, like there's people who, you know, just get overwhelmed and they give up. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, it just goes back to why. Right. Your why has to be strong. Like if you say I'm going to I'm going to get in shape. Right. So so I, I'll give you uh, like an example with my wives. Right. Um, me and my wife were at a, a museum in Omaha and they had this thing where like they were checking your blood pressure and I was uh, pre-hypertension, mm-hmm. you know? And so like, uh, again, I'm dumb as fuck. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Right? It's like, shit, am I going to fucking die? You know, like I, I didn't know what that meant, you know? And so I'm, my mind goes everywhere, right? It's like, oh, well, it's pre-hypertension. So I'm not hyper, so it must be good, right? But I mean, what the fuck is hypertension and am I going to fucking die from it, right? Yeah. And you know, um, I... Th- you know, my dad had a stroke in his 40s, you know, so um, that shit fucking scared the shit out of me. Right. And so, you know, that was one of my whys, you know, um, 
I, I have a couple uh, a couple boys now and 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 they like look at me and they start imitating me you know my daughter not so much you know she was very, very girly when she was young but my boys were like sit there and actually imitate like they see me do push-ups and they go down and they do push-ups you know mm -hmm. and i started thinking it's like man these boys are gonna look up to me as to like this is what a man does and if 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 they look at me and i'm fat they're gonna be like oh it's okay for a man to be fat mm -hmm. you know like like and, and 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 the only reason why uh you know uh not trying to fat shame or anything but just a sense that that you know being overweight does cause health issues you know yeah. i i want my kids to be healthy like i want them to live long lives i don't want my kids to be living this life because mm -hmm. you only get one and have any like health issues you know yeah like i don't want to fat shame anybody either yeah. when i talk about like fatness i'm really just like directing it towards myself yeah because you know i've had that conversation with myself if you're not ready to have that conversation with yourself then yeah. you know take your time yeah but i looked in the mirror i was upset with what i saw and you know every day after that was like an effort to yeah. make myself happier and like the person that i was like that was looking back at me yeah 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 you know there's there's different things that people want in, out of life you know and you we're one thing that I, I always say is I'm not talking uh, to anybody that's listening, mm -hmm. acting like I'm better than you. No, we're you beginners know? Yeah, yeah, all yeah. over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, I'm just on a journey, you know, and, 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 and I'm trying to get to see where this journey takes me. And, 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 and I'm, not, I'm not where I want to be at. I'm not somebody you want to model your life after. You know, I'm, I'm a nobody, you know. Um, I just, it's funny because like the way that we are talking here is just the way we talk. Mm -hmm. You know, the way I talk to you is the way I talk to myself, you know. So sometimes it doesn't come off as the nicest thing to say or the, or the most appropriate thing to say. But it's how I fucking talk to myself, you know. It's yeah. how I get myself to do these goals. Just like my stepdad was like, you can't do that. And, and through like what most people would call negative talk got me to do things, you know, like, I still do that shit to myself, I still like, hey man, you you ain't shit, motherfucker, like, come on, like, get this shit fucking done, you know, yeah. um, and so, um, you know, we really hope that this podcast, um, really motivates people to just be better, you know, to just do, just do whatever better is for you, you know, if it's not anything physical, fucking then then don't do that you like you know whatever is better for you i hope that um us being honest with our journeys mm -hmm. the fact that like yeah well, you know we may not be accomplished any things but just a regular working class guy trying to get after it every fucking day you know trying to be better you know mm -hmm. trying to hit this goal for no fucking reason, right? Some people need that medal at the end of the race, you know, like, oh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna run this half marathon because I like I'm gonna sign up and when I'm done I'm gonna get a nice shiny medal. Yeah, I'm you gonna know? post it on social media. And I'm gonna put it on social uh, social media. You I know? want those likes. Hell yeah. I want those comments. Hell yeah. I want the instant gratification that everybody is like, I wouldn't do it, but that you did it is pretty fucking yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm living for. Yeah, yeah, and, that's and, that mentality. Yeah, for sure. Like. And, 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 and 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 you know when I was running that half marathon, like I've never ran 13 miles before. Like right. towards the end, I was like, why the fuck am I doing this? Like there wasn't that metal, you know, that there wasn't anything. And when I do post things up on social media, like, it, like I just have Facebook, you know, I have mm -hmm. some Instagram, whatever, right? But it's, right now, like like I said, it's just people that kind of know me from either high school or throughout you know working is like the only people i have on there right mm -hmm. everybody know like has met me and knows that i'm not anything special so when i post like i, I just started recently posting up the you know the times that i run I, every time i run i put it out there i just started doing it i've ran a whole bunch more but the reason why i started doing it is because i want people like that have met me to say hey i met peter that motherfucker won shit <laughs> you know but yeah. hey, if he can do it, like I can do it. Yeah. You know, like like a lot of people met me like when I was 240, 250, and it's like if that motherfucker could run 13 miles, then like what can I do? You know, and 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 and, and I really hope that that's what just people get from this podcast. Yeah. When it's just when it's just you in the pavement or it's just you in the iron, like that's your time. Yeah. That's like when you're like putting in like you're not training for a marathon. You're not training for anything other than life. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we've talked about. Something that, like, as we've gotten older, it's kind of like, 
it's understood. Like, I don't necessarily want the metal. I don't necessarily want the likes. Mm -hmm. What I want is to, like, train for life. Because I'm I'm in it, you know. Mm. I'm going to do everything I can. I'm going to be the best that I can be physically, mentally, friendships, relationships, family, everything. Yeah. Like, it's all, like, positive from here. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's just about you know, us turning ourselves into somebody that we're proud of, you know, Mm -hmm. um, just, just building that stuff up. We have one life and if we don't do it, making ourselves feel good, you know, then it's like, Oh yeah. I've always been the type of person that if I can't make myself happy, I can't make anybody else happy. Yeah. Yeah. Which is one of the main reasons why I've been single for so long. It's like, I've had, like I've told you, like I've had like to battle my demons, physical fitness, running, now lifting weights like those are the kinds of things that like put the demons at bay yeah and i am becoming a more happy person and if i can make myself happy i can make someone else happy but until then i'm gonna keep doing what i do beautiful man well man that kind of seems like an uh, appropriate place to kind of yeah you know call it call it is um yeah so I mean, yeah, awesome man. This is the first one. The first one. It's in the books. We. It's only gonna get better. <laughs> yeah, it, it, oh God, I hope. <laughs> I I wouldn't say though, like the fact that there wasn't like too many like dead air. There wasn't like a lot of dead air. There wasn't like a bunch of, uh, uh, uh you fill in real quick while yeah. I think of like some cool shit to say. Right? Yeah. There was none of that. I just like we just riffed. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think one of the the benefits is that we've known each other for so long. We we have conversations like this like all the fucking time, five days a week. Yeah, so so <laughs> lately. Yeah, so um, you know, you know, hope, hopefully people like and they tune in. Hope so. All right. Where can they find you on Facebook? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if if you're listening to this first episode, you're more than likely on my Facebook. <laughs> you were probably already friends. <laughs> Same here. Yeah. Um, and my stuff is private for anybody who doesn't know me. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so actually that reminds me. Um, I want I want something um, to be a normal thing here on this podcast, right? Um, and I, I think that sometimes we don't appreciate the things that we have. Mm-hmm. So I want every day or every podcast to talk about people who have faced adversity mm. and have overcome it, right? Mm-hmm. So good thing I, I remembered. So I, I came across somebody on the internet. Her name is Crystal Cantu, right? So this this girl is a fucking savage. Um, she was in a car accident and lost an arm. Oh shit! Yeah, she uh, she was a CrossFitter beforehand, mm-hmm. right? And um, this girl is such a, a savage that she was in the hospital for a week. After she got out of the hospital, three weeks later, she was back at it at the gym. And, you yeah. know, since then, um, she's, you know, done, uh, she just continued to get better um, personal best. You know, she keeps breaking um, the amount of uh, a weight that she does. I mean, she's really inspirational. She also has her own podcast. Um, her name, again, is Crystal Cantu. Um, let me see. I actually looked her up and I can... I ended up starting to follow her on um, Instagram. And let me see if I could pull up her handle real quick. Talking about dead air, bro. <laughs> see you fucking Ooh. jinx me, man. Right at the very right end. Right at the very end. Where the fuck is she? Um, uh, you know what? I'll just pull her up on my Instagram. Hold up. You can edit this. No, I won't. I, they need <laughs> to know. There she is. Okay, so um, Crystal Cantu Cuate. I think that's her last name. Um, she has a podcast Spell that's it. called Unarmed Podcast. So she's just Crystal Cantu on Instagram. And so, yeah, like, check her out. It's really inspirational. And uh, the whole purpose of me doing this is just, like, when you sit there and complain about why you can't do the things you set out to do, mm-hmm. it's, like, it's people like this that can inspire us, you know, to to do better, right? It's, like, imagine, like, I think... If you were to lose an arm, that'd be a pretty damn good excuse to not do something, right? As long as it's not my right arm. <laughs> <laughs> and that brings us <laughs> to the end. To the end. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Let's get after it.